All right, so welcome back. This is Kevin McCain with Idaho Horror Classes and Kevin McCain Studios. We're going to be doing a little bit of color mixing today. Uh, we're going to be using watercolor. We're going to talk about um, varying the hue, and then we're talking about varying the, the the we're going to talk about varying the hue and then varying the chroma. Um, we already had another video where we talked about uh, dealing with the value. So we're going to, with this one, we're going to we're going to go ahead and deal with first with mixing the hue first. And then we'll talk about how we vary the chroma. Um, so again, we got we've got our paints um, laid out here. I guess I should probably wet these down a little bit. So I'll sprinkle some water out on here. Uh, if I was smart, I would have my little miss my little spritzer bottle. But this works, and you know, in case you don't you don't have one, <laughs> don't let that stop you. So. We're basically just going to be using a couple brushes here today. It's uh, I've got a, a number 10 round and a, and a three quarter inch brush. And uh, so whenever we're whenever we're trying to mix colors, uh, we want to identify the color. So we're always trying to identify what is the value, and then we identify what is the hue, and then we identify what is the chroma, or what is the intensity. Chroma and intensity mean the same thing. So value would be using the 10 the 10 step value scale. So is it high on the value scale? Is it low on the value scale? Uh, 10 is at the top, 1 is black, 10 is white. And so is it a step 7? Is it a step 6? If you don't know this, go ahead and download a value scale or go buy one from the art store and use it for, the, for while you're painting. It's a really great way to understand value. So, And that is the most number one most important thing is value. What is the value? What is the value? Color is anchored on good values and it doesn't matter if you're an impressionist doesn't matter if you're a derblau rider or you know some of these different color movements um it was all about understanding the value if you can if you can match the values you can play all kinds of color games and value is the most important characteristic of color that should not be ignored the other two you can play with, but the value should not be ignored. The next one is hue. So is it a yellow, a red, a blue, an, an orange, or a green, or a purple? What is, what is the hue? So it's one of six. So it's red, yellow, blue, orange, green, or purple. Okay, so that's the hue. And then with the, with the chroma, chroma is either, or intensity, we either have high intensity, which would be like this red, super, super bright, or would it be low intensity, like uh, something that's closer to almost a gray? Or is it somewhere in the middle, like these browns would be a medium intensity? So we'd have like high, high, you know, this would be more of a medium, medium, medium. And then something like this would be low. So we're going to go ahead and talk about how to control the hue. Now, again, we already have a video on how to darken watercolor and play with the values. Um, obviously to lighten it is easy, you add water, but to darken it, it gets kind of tricky with watercolor. And so you want to check that out. Um, the next part is we're gonna, we're gonna vary the values. Well, no, we're not. I just said we already have one about value. We're gonna vary the hues. And so if I am going to mix a orange, let me clean these colors up just a bit. We got still a little bit too much from uh, last time I was mixing these colors. They're a little dirty in a couple places. Um, and the easiest way to do that if you've got, now I don't, I don't, I, you know, I usually let my colors dry out. You know, I, I, if I squeeze out color, I try to not have to use it right after I squeeze it out. Because if you're not careful, you get a brush full of color that you can't, there'll never be, a, there'll always be a little piece in there that never gets dissolved and it creates a, a line a really high bright color in the middle of this nice wonderful you know subtlety that you that you've painstakingly you know mixed up and we don't want that so if we're gonna mix like an orange so we've got lots of yellows we got lots of reds we got lots of blues and greens now for those of you that again have the more limited palette where you have like um, lemon yellow and then like a a, a yellow medium or a Windsor yellow and then you have like you know a cadmium orange or a Windsor orange and then you have a a lizard crimson or you know a, a, um, a naphthol red or a, a Grumbacher red or a Windsor red and then you've got 
Doxine Purple, you're gonna have slightly different colors. So basically, you're gonna have colors that are spaced pretty close to evenly around the color wheel so that you'll have colors that are closer together and colors that are more distant. So if I'm gonna mix like an orange, and this is where this comes into play, if I wanna, we always wanna mix the brightest, the brightest hue that we can possibly mix. So if I say, hey, I have the hue of orange, I'm gonna be mixing basically yellow and red, but the type of yellow and the type of red will change drastically. There we go, we're looking for my orange yellow and the yellow that I have that's the absolute closest to orange and the red that's the absolute closest to orange. So I have four reds here, but one, this is a red orange. Now, if I already have orange, well then we don't have to mix orange. But what that is for is to take, like if I've got yellow here, pardon me, if I've got orange already, but this right here is the red and the, uh, and the yellow, and we've mixed, you know, uh, if we put this down here, we mixed, you know, a pretty nice um, bright orange with those with those two colors. Um, for you know, those of you that already have orange, you also have a, a yellow that's a little more lemony. And so, what you do with the orange is yellow and yellow and orange are right, right next to each other. If I want this is more of a of a greener orange or a lemony orange. If I want a true, uh, pardon me, I said lemony orange, a lemony yellow or a lemon yellow, which means it's slightly leans towards green. But to, to bring it over here to a true yellow, I can add just a little bit of the orange to that, to that yellow green to make it a true yellow. Or I could add a little bit even more orange to make a yellow orange, okay? So I can make, you know, from, so for those of you that have that other palette, that's what it's for. If I'm between that orange and the yellow green, I can get the whole spectrum of yellows. Uh, between the, uh, and from the, the uh, the sort of medium red or true red, uh, that's that Namthal red or Windsor red or Grumbacher red. Between that red and orange, you've got all kinds of red oranges. And if you took that red and mix it with purple, now you've got all kinds of red violets. And if you took the purple and mix it with blue, now you've got all kinds of range of, of violets and blues and, and all that good stuff. And then you also have a green blue, which between green and again, uh, purple, again, you can mix quite a spectrum um, of, uh, of blue greens because you have thalo green, which is a blue green. And so between the violet and the thalo or viridian, you might have thalo green or viridian green. I can't remember which is on the, which one I, I put on, on the list, but they're both the exact same hue. They're a blue green. It's just one is much more vibrant, much, much more intense than the other. But again, if I mix between purple and, and the blue-green, you'll get all kinds of spectrums of blues. Um, so anyways, you could do, I can, I'm just saying I could, I could have a completely different palette, like you folks that have, again, the, the, the more limited palette, but it, it gives you enough spectrum that you can mix pretty much the same thing. It's just that we can't deal as much with, we can't deal as much with, um, which colors are more opaque, which colors are more transparent, which colors are have bigger particles and stuff like that. Um, the size of the pigment. Uh, once you start doing that, if you have a dye color, which is you know very, 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 very fine pigment, and then something like an earth color, it's pigments like a boulder compared to a little tiny speck of dust. And so what'll happen is, is if you mix like a, an earth tone and with a dye color, the earth tones settle to the bottom and it gives you this grainy look. Well, we can't, you can't do that with the more limited palette that I gave you, but you can still make all kinds of colors. With this palette, you can actually play some of those, those games of bigger pigment versus smaller pigment, dyes versus settling colors and, and, and some stuff like that. So basically you'll be able to get to the same place, but there's certain games you can't play. Uh, and so that's, and you know, that's the, uh, the point was to make it a little bit less uh, expensive, less of a burden to get into watercolor. Uh, for those of you that have pan colors, again, you're going to have different colors, but mix the colors that are closest to orange. If you've got yellow and you've got red, use the orangest red, yellow you've got and the orangest red you've got to get the brightest, the brightest orange you can. So we can take this and this and we can make, you know, just a really nice. Now that's got, that has more red, so that's a red orange. And then I mix a little more of the yellow into it. And once again, we have something that's again, just nice, beautiful, pretty close, you know, to as close to true orange as you can possibly get. 
But let me show you what happens now. Again, for those of you with the limited palettes, again, you still have a, a nice you have a nice way of, of getting any one of these colors, but you don't I don't you don't I don't think you have the two different yellows. But this is for those that have bigger little like little pan colors that's got that has more of these colors where you might have three yellows or four yellows or five yellows. Um, you want the closest yellow to, to orange because if you don't, it seriously affects the color. And I'm going to show that to you right now. If we took a red, uh, this is a red violet, right? It's not quite purple. It's still, still got some red to it. And then we took, and I'm going to go ahead and make this even, let's make this even more, well, well we can make this a little less drastic. What if we made this a little bit less drastic? But then over here we said, all right, well, we're gonna go ahead and make this yellow more of a, this is still a yellow, but it's now even greener. It's a, it's a yellow green. And if we took these two colors together, well, yellow and red make orange, right? Even if I kept this a little bit more red. Um, so I mix that red violet with the yellow green, and this is the orange we get. That's got too much uh, red in it. Let me put more of the yellow in it. Now this yellow isn't going to make it more intense, it's just going to change it from the redder side to the yellower side. So understand that the colors that we pick have a drastic effect on the resulting color. This was a red that's a red violet, this was a yellow that was a yellow green. They're further apart on the color wheel. So if we had our color wheel out here, if we're using a yellow orange and a red orange, you get a nice bright, you know, a nice bright orange. But if we pick a yellow that's over here and then a red that's over here, they're further apart on the color wheel and the resulting color is much duller. So whenever we're mixing things, and again, if you've got orange, that's fine, but you may not have, you know, yellow orange or even a more, if I, sometimes there's yellows again where I need where, this is yellow orange, but it still needs to be still yellow, but a little oranger. And again, I can add just a little bit of that, that red and and create again a yellow that's sort of you know yellow orange sort of color um, we can do that so again if I had Windsor yellow and I got Windsor orange I can mix at least 10 steps or more of the very various steps between yellow getting closer to that that Windsor orange all right so that was mixing our orange now if we're gonna mix purple again let's show you what happens if we if we get far apart on this uh, let's say I said, well, I'm, well, it's red and, and blue, so that's a red right there, and this is a blue right here, so I should get a nice purple, okay? And lo and behold, this is what we're going to get. Not so nice a purple, okay? Uh, this is the color we've got. Okay, now that's a purple, but it's a purple gray, okay? And the reason that it's a purple gray is because this red is orange. We come to the color wheel. This is a red that's orange. We're using a blue that's green. And again, so they're almost directly across from one another. They're almost complete complements. And so you're going to get this dull gray color. Now look what happens to, to again to see what if we've got... Um, uh, what if we've got a blue that's violet? So this is our blue that's purple. Violet and purple mean the same thing, by the way. So we've got a blue that's purple and a red that's purple, purple red, purple blue. And now look at the purple we can make. And I'm gonna put this on this paper so we can see the, the difference. That's now the purple. And this is not even the same, doesn't even look like it's the same family. Uh, this is almost completely neutral gray, almost, not quite. Whereas this is really bright purple. And why did that happen? Because, because the colors I was using was close to purple. We used a purple blue, purple red, boom, we've got a gorgeous purple. So, uh, and again, you might say, well, what if I've already got purple? Well, if I've got purple and I've got a medium red, so this is my medium red, and this is purple, well, there's all kinds of colors between this red and that purple. Again, I could add a little bit of it to make it a little bit, you know, more purple, I could add more of the purple to make it even more purple still. This is still a red violet, maybe that went too much too quickly, you know.
we can get all, all these variations. And that's the point, is because purple and red are next to each other, we can get really nice bright hues. We want as bright a hue as we can possibly stand to get. So to mix that bright purple, we used a red that was here, or you know, and a blue that was here, closer together, and lo and behold, we got a brighter purple than these two that are much further away from one another. These are right next to one another. So again, we can we can go ahead and do it that way. Um, what if we want to mix a green? And again, for those of you that say, well, I don't know that I've got a blue on my palette. Now, I think that I gave you one blue on that limited palette, but I thought we had cobalt blue or maybe cobalt blue hue. But even if you don't, let's say if all I had was a good purple and then a, a nice blue green, So let me remix that purple. And I'm just saying that colors that are close to one another, purple and, and blue-green aren't exactly next to one another, but they are neighbors. And we're not using green, we're using blue-green. So we got something that's a little closer. We have a tertiary color that's next to the secondary color. So you'd have blue-green, then you'd have blue and blue-violet. So they're you know two colors away from one another. Uh, so if we had this purple, That one too blue. There we go. That's purple. That would be like a dioxazine or a Windsor violet or a Grumbacher violet or whatever. So if we took that and then we had uh, this is this is Viridian. Uh, for those of you that have Windsor Windsor green, it's going to be even a little bit brighter than this. So if you got Windsor green or Grumbacher green or Thalo green, uh, you're going to get nice brighter colors. But again, I could take this and by mixing a little bit of the purple into it. Now it's a little closer to blue. We're going to take a little bit more of this. And now it's going to get even, you know, now that's actually blue. And then if we took, you know, where you have more purple than, than green, this is even has more blue to it. Now these right here are not the brightest blues possible. Like it's, uh, but they're very nice blues. They're, they're, they're not bad blues. They're, they're like a, you know, again, there's, they're not bad. They're a little bit, a little bit grayed down, just a tiny bit grayer, meaning that they have lost some intensity, but still not a bad blue. And that's why, um, but if you had the thalo blue, it'd be even brighter just because thalo is really stronger to begin with. And, uh, but if I have Windsor blue, again, Windsor blue is kind of right in between these two. So again, if I've got Windsor blue, again, I can mix uh, between the purple and the Windsor blue is true blue, which is about right there. And now that's going to be a really, really bright color. And then, because again, this is even closer than the green and the purple are, and the green is a blue green. It's not a regular green, so don't, you know, if it was yellow green, that would be a no-no, because that'd be too far apart to even try this. Well, you could, but you'd be getting a much duller color. But again, you could take a little bit of this, uh, Thalo blue and Viridian, and now you've got this, you know, beautiful turquoise. You know, you've got a range of blues. You got true blue, blue green, blue violet. Again, you can mix the spectrum of the colors in between. You want the closest colors possible. Well, let's go back to mixing green from green from blue and yellow. Now, there's an old watercolor book that used to say that would talk about blue and green don't, uh, yellow and blue don't make green, and it's basically covering this concept. Clumsy uh, title, but uh, but it was something like that. I can't remember, but it's a lot more of a a, a, um, a recipe book, so I wouldn't recommend it. But the basic concept is if I'm making uh, the brightest green I can get, I'm going to use the yellow that's lemony because it's closer to green, and then I'm going to use if I'm going to use, if I use the blue green, well then wow, I mean, you're going to be able to paint, you know, neon fluorescent green socks from the 80s. Well, they'd have a little more yellow and it'd be a little lighter, but still, um, you could, that's just the brightest green you could possibly stand. Let's say you didn't have the blue green. All you had was blue. Well, of the two blues, this is my green blue. Some people call it a baby blue, but can you see the green? There's a little, it just leans towards green. And again, if I, if I, if I mix this with my yellow, it's not all that different from the one I just did because again, it's very, very close. The yellow is closer to green, the blue is closer to green, and I get 
a nice green. Now this is a little on the blue side, so if I wanted it more yellow, I would, I would just add some more yellow to it. Now this isn't going to make it more intense, it's just going to shift it from the, a little bit to the, to the yellower side of green is all. Uh, that's almost you know too bright. You'd almost never use this even in a landscape because that's too bright a color. It'll start to look like it's, it's, it's unnatural. But so if we're going to mix the, the green, we want the yellow that's the closest to green. We want the blue that's closest to green. And if you guys want to see what that blue looks like by itself, unmixed, uh, again, it's called, it goes by 40 different names. But if it's Windsor Newton paint, usually it's called Windsor Blue. If it's Grumbacher, it's, it's usually called Grumbacher Blue or Thalo Blue. It goes by Manas, but then it goes, towards, uh, it goes by a lot of different names. But this is that blue, okay? And if we look at this and compare it to the purple, there's, you know, it does not look purple. This is a green blue. It's, or I see what people call it a baby blue. And if you're doing landscapes and want a warm sky color, that's a warm blue. Okay. And, you know, those people out there, they're like, nope, nope, the warm one is the blue violet because it's got red and red is warm and therefore it's got to be the warm and blah, 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 blah. That's one of these things that artists will sit in coffee shops all day long and argue which is the warm blue. It's, it's the most divisive, you know, in the color mixing realm. But the idea is, is that the blue violet is closest to the coolest secondary, which is violet. That's the coolest color of the secondary colors. And what's the, ones that, the one that's right next to it? It's blue violet. And that's the rationale for the people that are in my camp that say, nope, this red violet is the cool blue. And this blue green is the warm blue. Okay, so I just want you to understand I'm aware of the differences. I'm aware of, of the arguments and I have made my decision. I'm not and it's just the way it is. Of these two blues, this to me seems warmer. This starts to feel ice cold. So, you know, stand where you will. It's like trying to have a political conversation with somebody. Um, it just is what it is. And uh, either either way, artists can can work with with blue in a very effective way. It's just in my painting world, this is what this is the way I feel about the blues. There you go. You're welcome. Uh, but let's say we mixed, uh, let's say we mixed a green that doesn't have the blue green. Let's say we used our blue violet. And then we used our yellow orange. So if we use our yellow orange and our blue violet, we're going to get a very different green. We're going to get a green that's very dull. That's on the blue side. Again, I can add more yellow, but this won't add more intensity. It just adds, it won't make it any brighter. It just makes it more yellow. Okay. So those are greens that are, are mixed with the blues and yellows that are further apart. Whereas these are the greens that are mixed where the yellow and the blue are right next to one another. So we want to mix up the hue with you know, as bright as we possibly can when we're mixing colors to match. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's how we want to, again, we want to mix the colors that are closest. So again, if, I've, if I want to mix the best orange I've got, I can, and I, if I've got, if I've already got orange, well then I can't really mix orange, I've already got orange, but I can mix between the red and the orange to get a red, you know, red oranges, you can mix between, your, actually your lemon yellows over here, but you can mix between this and lemon yellow to get that spectrum. But if I'm mixing orange, I want the yellow and red that are the closest not the yellow and red that are further apart. And so again, same thing with our, with our red. If we've got red and we've got violet, we can mix this spectrum. If we've got violet, we've got blue, we can mix that spectrum. Um, if we've got our yellow and our, you know, our, Win our, Windsor, um, our Windsor green or our Grumbacher green or Thalo green, it's about right here. And again, between that and our yellow green, you can get all kinds of spectrums of, of, of greens. Um, but if I'm mixing green, I want the I want the, the the yellow that's the closest to green. I want the blue that's the closest to green. And you'll get really great greens. 
If I'm mixing violet from red and blue, use a blue that's closer to violet and use a red that's closer to violet and you'll get a gray violet. Mix two that are further apart, you're going to get gray. So the closer the colors, the brighter the resulting mixture. All right, so that's how we use that color wheel. So that's how we're going to vary our hues. All right, but what if we want? What if we need to vary our intensity? So again, we already have one where we talk about how to darken, and we're either going to darken it, darken our colors by using either Payne's gray or burnt umber. And I've got a whole video on that. Um, and by doing that, you can get a lot of control very quickly with your watercolor. But, and so if we're going to darken something, we would either use, if it's blue, green, or, or purple, we use Payne's Gray because it has blue in it. And green and blue and purple all have blue, so it will stay bluer. Uh, if we need to darken yellow, red, or orange, yellow, red, or orange in between, we, can, we would use our burnt umber in general to darken our color. And for the yellows and oranges, it gets a little bit more complicated than that. Um, so that's what that other video is for. Now we're going to talk about graying colors down, or in other words, lowering their intensity or lowering their chroma. Chroma and intensity mean the same thing. So something of high chroma, again, would be something really, really bright, like say this red. Very, very high chroma. Something of low chroma would be something like, you know, something like this gray. Okay? Very, very, very low chroma. And something in between would be something that's not that dull and something that's not that bright. So maybe we have a burnt sienna if we're going to stick with red. This has red in it, that's got red in it, and this has red in it, but they're three very different types of reds. High chroma, medium chroma, low chroma. All right, so to lower the chroma of a color, we're going to add, again, the, the color, we're going to add basically a mixture. If we have, if we have water here, and I have, let's see if this is a red, so we might, we might use brown because we use brown with reds, oranges, and yellows. So if I add a mixture of brown to that red, it's going to dull it down. This is the resulting red I get, okay? So if I wanted darker, we could add more red, and then we can also add more brown to give it, you know, a little bit. But it's still going to dull down that mixture, okay? Pretty, pretty color, but very, very different from this color over here. Um, so we can add, whenever you add water and, and that brown, it's going to dull it down. But it's also gotten warmer on this one. So this has a little bit of violet to it, which means we want a little bit of blue in there. So we're going to use our Payne's Gray in here, and this will bring some of the blue into this. And we'll pull this red back to the red-violet area. So again, this right here is now a little bit more of the red violet. Medium chroma, but it's a red violet. Um, it could be a little higher, again, we, we might go, wow, oh, I wish it was a little bit higher than that. Not quite out of the two, but maybe a little bit brighter chroma, but not the brightest. Again, this would be getting a little, a little brighter, like so, okay? Um, and chroma has nothing to do with how light or how dark it is. So little cute pastel colors of Easter, those are medium chroma colors. All right. Browns are medium chroma colors. So it has nothing to do with the value. It has nothing to do with the hue. It has to do with how bright or how dull it is. So I could dull this red again with a little bit of brown. Now I said the brown has a little, is basically a dark, dark, dark orange. So it has yellow, it has red. And so by adding this to this red, it got a little bit too red orange. And so we had to add blue. Now I could add this blue, but if I add that blue, it might be too bright. And so, and it also might take over the mixture and push it too quickly into into violet. So instead, I used this that has blue in it too. So this is Payne's Gray. Now, um, so that I could use that if I wanted to kind of split the difference. Well, I can add blue to that Payne's Gray, make it even more blue, uh, and then see if that you know would would do what I want. But it's going to quickly, yeah, that's taking that way too far into purple. Um, and a little bit of the brown back to it. There we go. That seems to be about the right family. 
Nope, it went a little bit too purple, so we're getting a little bit more, a little bit more of this to it, which would add a little bit more again of the orange red, which will pull that from a a very violet red to a you know a little less violet red. If we kept adding more of the of the of this burnt umber, it would start to pull it to true red and so forth and so on. Now, if I so I can do that with with any color. So we did that with red. If I've got yellow, again I can I could I could lower the the intensity of a yellow. Let's say we have this yellow right here. I could lower the intensity by adding a little bit of this brown yellow. Okay, that's a little less intense, right? And that's much less intense than if I took these two colors. And that's much brighter. You know, this would be the bright yellow, high chroma. And if I mixed it with, you know, the yellow brown, this would be a little lower chroma. Uh, and if I want to, I could, you know, see if a little bit of this. Now, this might not lower the chroma. This just might add more red. Yeah, the chroma doesn't seem to have changed. It just adds a little bit of the red. Um, so we can do that with our yellows. Um, now, if I, it's the colors that get kind of close to, like this is a, a, a yellow uh, that's a little green. And when I add this to it, this has red to it. So now this has changed that yellow into like a, a, a true yellow. It's pulled it out of the yellow green family. So if I wanted to neutralize it, and, and bring a little bit of the blue again to bring it, take it more back to lemony yellow. I could use a little bit of that Payne's gray because it's got a little bit of blue, and now we're back into the lemon yellow family. Uh, so again, we could you know bring it back. We might even bring it back a little bit more, a little bit of this Payne's, a little bit more of the Payne's gray. Now the more Payne's gray I add, that's maybe gone. Yeah, that's gone too far. The more uh, the more gray you add to this, the the duller it's going to be, right? That's not bad. That's about right. Um, so I can, whereas if I, you know, so on this on this yellow, I'm probably going to be using because it's yellow green. I'm probably going to use a mixture of both a little bit of the of the brown and a little bit of the Payne's gray because it's got it's got to have a little bit of that blue to it. Um, if we're going to darken red again, we're darkening a blue red. But what if we were darkening a red that's more orange? Well, we're probably not going to we're not going to use any of the Payne's gray at all. We're just going to use this is, which is, you know, again, this is actually a little bit on the redder side. Um, but let's say it did get a little bit too orange for me. Well, I could do one of two things. I could add a little bit of this to it, to the Payne's Gray, or my other option is I might add a little bit of red violet, or maybe if I had violet, a little bit of violet, a little bit of red, and then add that to it. And this is a little bluer. This is even more blue. And this will pull it back into that blue-red spectrum. Now that was way too far, right? Because now that looks like this could be almost that color. And so we'd say, well, all right, well, that went too far. Guess what? I got more of this over here that will pull it back into sort of that, that's about true red and keep adding. And we're going to go back into red orange. Okay. Now we're back into red orange again. So again, this is, we can, we can shift the, the hue a little bit as well, but we have a medium, a medium, um, medium intensity or medium chroma color from that red. Um, and again, if we're going to darken blues or greens, again, we, we would be adding that Payne's gray. And that's fine. To get the medium chroma colors, we're going to be adding uh, a little bit of that brown. Now, we can also, um, whenever we add water, things will start to lose their intensity. Now, this doesn't happen as quickly in watercolor as it does in oil paint or acrylic because you're actually adding white and white has a much more substantial effect than this does. So when you add water, it's gonna also dull this down. So this right here is lost some intensity. Still a nice color. Uh, it's somewhere between a high intensity and medium intensity uh, color. But if we want to dull it down, again, we'd have to, you know, again, start to add some of this stuff to it to dull it down even more, right? Uh, again, if we're gonna, if we're gonna, you know, take a blue and and, and dull the blue down. We're going to add a little bit of the Payne's Gray to it. Add Payne's Gray to that. Again, it's going to dull it down. Okay. Now that dulled it down considerably. If I wanted more blue, I could add a little bit more blue back into that to make it a little bit more intense, you know. Or this is no longer blue out of the two, but it's not, it's not that dull either. So again, how much gray to how much blue will, of course, affect this. But and of course, also how light I make it, because if I take that same color, this color, 
and add lots of water to it, again, it's going to lose its intensity as it, as it gets watered down. So see how much more gray this looks than that? It's just that with water, but it looks much more gray because the more that we lighten a color, the more it loses its intensity. Well, what if we need something um, that's a medium true gray? Well, actually, let's go to this first. Let's say, what if I need to dull down, really dull it down? Like, again, the brown will only, if I've got red and I've got that brown, the brown's only gonna dull it down so far. You know, there's, there's, it's only gonna dull it down to a certain point, in which case it's not gonna go any duller. So how do we get this more neutral? What if I've got a red that's more neutral than this? Well, what we, we would do is we're gonna take the Payne's gray. So if we take Payne's gray, and the and the uh, and the brown and that red. Well, now we're going to get very 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 dull reds. Okay, so if this was see how dull that red is. You know that's 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 a very dull red. Um, so again, you know this is again a very very. It's still got red, but look how but look how dull it is. And then we said, well, and if we make it lighter, it's going to lose more intensity. So if we made it super light, then it's going to really start to go neutral, right? Because that, again, the more we lighten the color with water, the grayer it goes. Okay, so if I have, that was a red, and it'd be the same thing with yellow. If we've got yellow over here, and let's say we just started with this yellow because we wanted one that just wasn't, our, that's not brightest out of the tube or what have you. This is a yellow, um, a raw sienna. And again, we could dull this down with a little bit of brown, but it will only dull it so far. So then we're going to dull it also with a little bit of the, because this is blue, this is orange. Those are complements, which means you add two complements and they gray each other down. Now look how, now look how dull that yellow is. That's still yellow, but it's getting very, very close to neutral. And again, we could continue to add bits of the Payne's gray and the brown until we start getting, you know, very, very neutral. Okay. Still a yellow, but again, very, very, very neutral sort of a yellow. And if someone goes, that looks like a brown, well, browns are yellows and reds and oranges. That's all browns are. So when you start to neutralize a yellow or orange or a red or with, uh, with Payne's gray and brown, or if you begin to darken it, again, with these colors, it's going gonna, it's gonna to push into the brown family. But brown, there is not no such thing as just brown. There are yellow there are green, yellow, browns, there are yellow, browns, there are yellow, orange, browns, there are orange, browns, red, orange, browns, red, browns, red, violet, browns. All those are types of brown. So there's there's all kinds of browns. We want When you see a brown, you have to start analyzing. What is it? Because if you don't know what you're looking at, there's no way you're going to be able to mix it. All right. Let's say we were doing blue. Uh, I think we did blue already, but let's just, just in case. Uh, we said, all right, well, let's do blue. We're going to dull it down with a little bit of, of the Payne's gray, but there's going to be a point at which that will no longer, so this is dulled it down a little bit, uh, and, but it's not going to dull it down much more, so I have to start adding some of the brown. So if I start adding burnt, this burnt umber, which is the orange, and the Payne's gray, which is blue, now we're getting blues that are going to go, again, very, very close to true neutral grays. It's so neutral, you, all, you almost can't, It's the, the blue seems to be disappearing a little bit. Okay. Um, as you get close to what's called a true neutral gray, uh, it'll start to be very hard to identify. Is that a blue? Is it a red? Is it a purple? Um, let's go to purple. Let's say, all right, let's, we were going to dull this purple down. Again, if I got purple, that's a red violet. We want actually as close to true. Okay, that's close to true purple. That's, yeah, that's really good. So we can, dark, we can go ahead and dull it down with a little bit of Payne's gray, but it will only grow, grade down so far. So to grade down even more, Lower that intensity even more. We're going to add both the burnt umber and the Payne's gray because this is orange, that's blue. Complements gray each other out. And now we've got a violet that again is very, very, very close to, to gray. And if that was too gray, well, then we could say, well, what if I wanted to make it a, a, a higher intensity? Well, then we're going to grab a little bit of, the, of this, um, make a nice bright purple. That's too blue. There we go. That's purple. And then we'd add a little bit of this to that and we'll get the color in between these two, right? So that's got more easier to see the purple in that. That's a little more purple. And so again, we can we can use mixtures of brown and Payne's gray and, and or mix them together into mixtures to make them less bright, even more 
and more neutral. Okay, so let's say we were dealing with, um, again, let's, let's do green. So again, if we've got green, uh, I could either mix green or I could use green out of the tube, whichever I want to do, either would work. This works for mixed colors. It works for colors right out of the tube. This is green. It's it's in the it's either greens, purples, or blues. We use Payne's gray. Again, we can dull this down with Payne's gray, um, which we've done. Okay, so we've got a green like this. Now, if we want to dull that down even more, then we have to add a little bit of the of the burnt umber. That is the orange and the blue. Now we got complements, and now it's really gonna gray down that that green, right? And of course we could lighten it too. We could make it a little bit, you know, a little more water, light it up, you know, if it's lighter to get, you know, colors like there. We can get all kinds of myriads of colors by adding different mixtures of either just brown to either yellow, orange, or red, or mixing Payne's Gray into blues or violets or greens or we can use mixtures of both Payne's Gray and the Burnt Umber and mix both of those colors together and mix them into colors. And that will give us, you know, really dull color, all right? And then also remember that if we add water, those colors are gonna look much brighter. And then as you add water to them, they look grayer and grayer and grayer, and grayer because colors lose intensity. They, you know, they get duller the more you add water to them, the more you water them down. They also will lose intensity when you start darkening them as well. All right, so this is, uh, we've talked about how we can mix our hues and then we take those hues and we can, we can then control their intensity. So we could, you know, mix them with either brown or Payne's gray to make them a medium intensity or we could add Payne's gray and burnt, you know, burnt, or pardon me, burnt umber and Payne's gray to get a low intensity, uh, low intensity color. Or we could just, you know, mix them, you know, just together by themselves to get a high intensity color. This would be a high intensity, right? And this would be a red violet as opposed to adding more blue and now it's, you know, true purple. And if we keep adding blue, well now that's a blue violet, you know. We could certain now this is much higher in chromos, and but that's the, there's times where that's what we need. So that's how we can control these colors. All right, we're gonna come back here in a, with, with another video. We're gonna talk about how we can match color using these concepts of we first mix the hue you always whenever you're mixing mix the hue first and then we deal with the um how light or how dark it is so first is the hue is it you know yellow or orange red you know purple blue or green and then we go how light or how dark is it we mix that and the last thing we do is we mix the chroma we we deal with the chroma either lowering it you know, usually we're lowering it. Usually we're not having to make it higher. Usually we're having to make it lower. So that's how we mix paint. And so we're going to talk about that in the next video. You guys take care. Be more creative. Have a good one. Bye-bye now.